promised, I'm getting to a video with the Erebus version 3. Now, this is a prototype of the V3. Um, I'll be getting, I guess, a real one later. And I know you're, th you're thinking, gosh, you've had a prototype and you haven't done any videos with it. Yes, that's mostly because I've been busier than hell, um, which is kind of frustrating, I admit. So anyway, I'm going to go through three patching demonstrations. Now, I know Tomas over at uh, Synth Anatomy, <laughs> uh, he's already done some pretty good examples, so I'm going to kind of step you through this a little bit and, and give you some illustrations. Um, one is kind of a drum sound, the other one is working with sample and hold, and the third one is how to use the mod wheel to control vibrato. And thank you, Yanni at Dreadbox, for giving me a couple tips on that last one because I'm not sure I would have figured it out myself. And I did help with the manual on this a little bit, but I didn't really help explain any of the patch points. I was doing most of the other body and stuff. So I'm familiar with the synth. I, I'm, I'm still amazingly getting familiar with the patch points, or getting more familiar with the patch points. I am drinking because it is the holiday season. I'm drinking a Christmas beer. Yes, that's right, a Christmas beer. I'm not a big religious person, but I like the holidays and I like beer. So <laughs> this is from Breckenridge Bra. I was going to say Brower Rye. Breckenridge Brewery out of Colorado, where they got the Rocky Mountains and stuff. And it's decent. It kind of reminds me of a certain German Christmas beer I used to get. So anyway. Off to the Erebus V3 and the holidays and all that other stuff, and back to my Christmas beer. Cheers. Okay, we are here doing three patch examples for the Erebus version 3. As I think I mentioned in the intro, this is a prototype. Uh, the labeling is different, at least on a couple of the patch points. A couple things that uh, Dreadbox has tweaked from this prototype to the release version, it won't matter for these examples. So anyway... Starting off with patch number one. This is mod wheel control of the LFO to the, the frequency. Basically, mod wheel controlled vibrato. So I've color coded my cables. And you'll be able to use this compared to the graphic that displays on the screen there. And easy to do. Let's start this off real quick. First thing, if you want to use the mod wheel to control anything, you have to plug the mod wheel patch. So what's coming out of the mod wheel will now go into the CVN for a VCA, voltage controlled amplifier. Now this is basically a voltage controlled attenuator at least as I'm using it. So orange cable from mod out to CVN on the VCA row, row, then LFO out to the N on that same VCA row. Green cable is going from the out to the CVN and the CVN is really what controls the frequency. So it's, it's going at a good speed that I like for vibrato, and there are three things that control the depth, how strong the vibrato is, and that will be the depth uh, lever here. This attenuator for the VCA row controls it, and then also obviously the mod wheel, because the mod wheel is going into that VCA row, and all three of those things. Now I already have it kind of set up to, uh, to make it playable at least. And so let's give it a shot here. So that's it, in a nutshell. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Now, again, you can make this really extreme. If you keep the depth value fairly low, um, and this value, the attenuator over here, fairly low, then most of your control 
it is occurring from the mod wheel. And it, and it can go, it can go fairly extreme even with these settings right now. So actually the, uh, the margin of movement to affect this is smaller than I would have expected, but um, it works and I love it because uh, I like having my vibrato. So anyway, next example. This is going to be a sample and hold patch. Yes, that's right. I wanted to explain the sample and hold a little bit, and here are some il illustrations that help do that. With each pulse of the clock, a value is sampled from the underlying waveform, which in this picture is a sine wave. That value is held for the length of the pulse duration. In the graph, the clock pulses are represented by the blue dashed lines. So there's a clock pulse with each of these periods represented here. And there's a sample taken at each of those clock pulses. The red waveform represents the output of the sample and hold patch, which can then be used to modify other things. In this example, we're using it to modify filter cutoff, but it could have also modified the oscillator frequency and anything else that has an input. So, and this is actually what we ended up patching. This is a noise wave in the background, random noise basically. And so we've set up a patch to sample that random noise, which it can be used to patch a fairly random modulation, which we've used to affect the filter cutoff. So right here, it's sampling from part of this noise wave. It's being held for the duration of the sample clock interval. It's sampling another part of the noise wave, being held. Another part of the noise wave, being held. Another part of the noise wave, being held. Until you have that effect. And when you hear it, you'll recognize it. So, here we go. Orange cable stays the same from mod to VCA N, CVN. Red cable is going to go from in to noise. Then the output from the VCA is going to go to the sample and hold in. And it's raining outside, so you might be able to hear some noise apart from my synthesizer and talking. And then lastly, green cable is going to go sample and hold out to the cutoff, the filter cutoff. So this will be kind of like that Emerson Lincoln Palmer uh, Carnival, Carnival Number no. 9 opening bit. Okay, it wasn't working initially, so we've adjusted some stuff. Go ahead and crank up the level on the sample and hold fairly, fairly high, at least the 3 o'clock position. Same thing with the VCA out. Crank up that attenuator, the level, up to about 3 o'clock. And then, lo and behold, this little mod wheel now controls the amount of sample and hold filter effect. Pretty cool, huh? Obviously you can affect the total amount of the filter effect by also changing the cutoff here. In addition, you know, everything's kind of additive, so.
So if you copy all the settings in this picture, then you will have a fairly decent percussion patch. So it's important to understand that the shape of the drum or percussion pitch or frequency is controlled by the envelope settings. Here are the envelope settings, the A for attack, D for decay, S for sustain, R for release, shapes that envelope that affects the pitch. And here's an example of a fairly good envelope for a drum sound. A really quick attack, medium decay, a low or no sustain, and then the release however you want it. The total amount of modulation is affected by three things. It's the envelope level here, the VCA patch level controlled here, and the mod wheel input, which you can't see in this picture. So patching example number three is going to be percussion. So let's take these out. Again, orange cable into the mod. Mod out going into the VCA CVN. And that allows you to use the mod wheel to control how much of an element of this, uh, this percussion effect works. Red cable goes from envelope. This is going to help shape the pitch of the oscillator to VCA in. And blue cable goes from the out, the plus out, or the positive out, to the CV in. And then lastly, lastly we're, we're going to patch the noise um, directly out into the amp. Now we could do this either way. We could patch it directly into the amp so you'll hear kind of the full noise or if we wanted to we could patch it into the filter. So however we shape the filter would then also affect the noise and not just the oscillator. So let's try it with just the amp. And it will take some setting on the envelopes too. So let's give this a shot. So we have an early version of this getting set up. I think I can tweak it a little more and make it a little better, but uh, uh, the mod wheel is then controlling how much the envelope affects that pitch of the oscillator. So that's mostly it. Now let's try it. Let's go ahead and move that. Uh, this is a slight modification on the percussion patch. Let's go ahead and move the noise out into the filter, in filter. So. See that way the amount of noise that's the high end um, stuff is filtered by the filter in the same motion that it controls the pitch of the, uh, of the oscillator as well. That sounds a little better, actually. So there you go. That is the third patch example. Nothing fabulous, but um, it's a starting point. I encourage you to play with it. Okay, for the drum patch, it really takes a lot of playing with the envelope and the amp as well, um, contouring that. But uh, you have the patch points combined with that, and then to taste, however you really want it to sound, you can use either a, a saw wave, a square wave. Um, I tend to prefer to use one predominant oscillator's pitch that I'm modifying, and then I can use the second one. And to make a little more sense, maybe you can go back and watch the uh, drum effects or percussion effects I also did with the ARP Odyssey. So there it is, the Erebus and three patching examples that uh, hopefully give you some starting points to, to screw around with here on the Erebus. 
and um, again this was a prototype but I should be getting the release version here fairly soon and I will likely do some more patch examples okay wherever you are whatever you're doing cheers <laughs>